Hello and welcome back to our second segment for the November Ba Show. This is Bruce Henderson with Tachi I, Associate Editor this time, unless I get demoted. And heck, I may demote myself at any moment. Joining me is the creator of Tachi I, Andy. Hello, Andy. Hey, good and morning. Once again, the man in foreign lands has returned to foreign lands. Hi, Josh. It's crazy. We're all wearing the same clothes as the last podcast. I just, it's amazing. <laughs> it's as if we put things on pause and got a drink of water and start it all over again. So let's uh, let's rock and roll with this. Um, a lot of news to talk about in the sumo world because uh, sumo is attempting desperately to try and find a way to carry on their sport in the face of the coronavirus. Uh, and frankly, I believe having a bit more success than the Americans are or, or the European uh, um, Football League and all the rest of that. The sumo, for all of its faults and all of its sort of throwback mentality, seems to have actually found a path through this nonsense. And it's, it's I, I'm so grateful. And one of the big things, one of the big changes that happened is that um, prior to September, there was no joint training. So all of the people at the very top end of the bounds, okay, for the most part, had to make do with whomever was in their stable. They couldn't even train across Ichiman. Uh, and it really showed in the readiness of folks like, I don't know, let's say specifically Asanoyama. And so in their wisdom, the Sumo Association decided that they were going to use the Kokugikan for a sort of bubble practice zone with some top ranking people. Uh, and I think it was spectacular and brilliant. Um, and so uh, we talked a little, about, a little bit in the first segment that Hakuho showed up toss some people around. We got to see Takayas or not Taki, Taka Keisho and Shodai go head to head, um, which uh, we really hadn't seen that much of. It was really kind of neat to watch those two at, in practice and, and go at it. But uh, a name I brought up at the top of this, Asanoyama, did not take advantage of this. He stayed in his uh, in his heya and uh, and trained just with his, his Rikshi. But um, thoughts about the joint practice session, if you would be so kind, Josh. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's as you say, it's certainly better than the nothing that we had before. And the interesting thing is, is it was mostly the same cast of characters for all six or seven days. And as you say, that you, you might have gone through and got to day four or five of these sessions and the updates come through the media and you think, oh, maybe this will be the day that Asanoyama shows up or that somebody else will show up. But um, you, you really did see a real dedication to the cause from... Uh, guys who maybe don't have the ability to, to work with Rikishi of a similar level to them on a day-to-day -day basis in their own heya, uh, the name Mitake Yumi, I think, yep. springs to mind as someone who's really dependent on Degeko uh, during normal times. He's someone who's not really known as a serious trainer, uh, so it was good to see someone like him making, uh, making use of it. I think... The analogy that sprung to mind for me was it was kind of like getting bonus content on a DVD box set yes. where it's like, you Very know, what I mean? it's like, oh, all of a sudden we got this little extra bit of these other 10, these 10 guys just going at it for a week. And it's great. It was Thanks, great. Guys. I, and I like the fact that they were putting video of it out. That was that was superb because normally we don't get to see much of Degeko at all. Andy, thoughts about this joint training session? Oh, I think it was a great opportunity for Shodai and for Kiribayama, um, but you could definitely feel the absence of Kakaryu, uh, and I guess that that just put a bigger question mark over whether he's going to even participate this tournament. Yep. Um, but I, a lot of the younger guys seem to be very uh, eager to oh, yeah. um, to be in there like not just the top guys but the guys who were like makushta who were there getting towels for people but the thing is they were able to hang out with hakuho and i mean it, it was it's kind of funny to see hakuho messing around with mitake yumi um a little bit uh <laughs> I, I think he was giving him a little bit of the ribbing for his uh um i guess attitudes toward practice or whatever but, always a uh, bridesmaid yeah, and I, I, I'm I'm pretty excited about the opportunities that um that that may have provided for uh for each other to kind of learn, but um I don't think that necessarily we learned anything about their condition from what we saw um unfortunately, so uh we might be able to um we might be able to see some Yokozuna this tournament, but uh, I'm not counting on it. Well, as, as has been repeated often, sumo fandom training is not competition. 
But um, uh, another aspect is that uh, after holding a, a basho where or, or two where there there were no well, as one basho where there was nobody in attendance, it was the hall was empty. It was just spooky as can be. Um, they've slowly been creeping the attendance count up, and we're up to uh, to five thousand people in the Kokugi Con, just under half capacity. Um, there's going to be less distance between the seats. There's going to be uh, some people sitting in the uh, ringside, ringside Zabutan, which would be neat because there was like this, uh, this sort of no man's land immediately surrounding the doyo. And I think for myself, although there's absolutely no way I could ever make it to Japan this year, they're going to be selling food and merchandise again, including frothy adult beverages, which as folks who have seen me in the Kukugi Con know, the top division does require two tall boy cans in order to make it through. <laughs> Um, but uh, Andy, thoughts about uh, the changes going on uh, at the Kokugi Con and their and their efforts to reopen? Well, more fans is great, but there's still going to be a lack of that atmosphere. Yep. I mean, uh, the there'll be people on Zabuton, but I don't think that any Zabuton are going to be thrown. Um, no well, and cheers. Everyone's still going to be masked, so there's no going to be no screaming crowds. Exactly, and that's the thing. Like no, no atmosphere, um, no, no screaming. It's going to be clapping. It's going to sound more like tennis um, <laughs> and, and sumo uh, and or golf. But the thing is, it's a good sign that they're opening things up. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Josh has seen this with the live music industry. That it's they're having a hard time live entertainment and trying to get that fan interaction. Uh, but we want to play, we want to get out there, and we want to be able to, to um, see our uh, um, see our sports, see our, our music. And so it's nice that they're kind of taking it slow, but um, it's still it's not going to be the same, unfortunately. Um, yep. So it'll be nice. Josh, um, an interesting development in sumo fandom. Um, does it also indicate something with the uh, the rescheduled twenty now twenty twenty one Olympics in Tokyo, which are just what eight nine months away? Ha. Well, well, let me, I'll I'll speak to both of your points. I think you know, Andy, you first when you talk about you know sumo and its position relative to the other parts of the entertainment industry. I think it's a real credit to sumo that they've been able you know first, as Bruce says, to to get people in there and then to raise that cap. To 5,000, having shown that they can do it successfully, and um, and um, and Bruce, before I get to the second part of your question, I think it's important to point out. One, of, I was I was at KokugiCon last year with one of our um, one of uh, our site's readers who I got introduced to, and they actually told me there's a big frozen beer machine at KokugiCon, which I I'd been there probably 10 times, I didn't know, but so that that's the real experience that Weird. people are going to get to have now: frozen oh. draft beer machine it's incredible um but yeah i, I think i think the, the key when you talk about you know the olympics you talk about sumo and fans coming back is that japan's been able to at least neutralize the situation somewhat with respect to the pandemic and everything else it, it's a place where you, know, you talk about not being able to cheer this this concept of mask wearing and cheering inside of your heart it, it's not inherently controversial people will do it so I, when I look at people who I know in Japan, I see a mix of people. Some haven't left their house in months. Others are cautiously enjoying life. I think maybe if you stay out of the Kyabakura and away from Abi, uh, it's okay. I think the, the, the underrated thing about this capacity limit has been that even now in this, this uh, increased capacity, you only have two people in one of the Masu box seats. And... Um, I know the Kyokai prints money off of those boxes, but four people in there is not a good time. So if you're, you know, if, if you're able to take advantage and get one of those tickets to this tournament, and this may actually be one of the best times yep. uh, to be sitting there close to the action and cheering inside of your heart. Well, yeah. So to footnote what Josh said, uh, four people is a, is a rough ride. Four Americans. Well, that's really quite the event. <laughs> and, and we've done that. But uh, yeah, good comments. Uh, we also have heard that the uh, Sumo Association is going back on the road and that this March, Sumo will return to Osaka, which I think is a very interesting and, uh, dare I say it, bold step for the Sumo Kyokai to, to take. 
Um, more of an attempt to return to normal, you think, Josh? Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Um, I think they're trying to figure out how to get everybody down there. You know, Shibatayama, Suizo Yakata, the head of PR for the Kyokai said, you know, we, we've got to kind of make this decision now because it's going to take us a minute to figure it out. Um, you know, getting them, getting everybody down there and keeping them isolated from the public at large is really the challenge because you, you move every single one of the stables from Tokyo down to the Osaka area and they set up their training camp and then they go and do the basho. Um, the really interesting thing though about the Osaka basho in particular is that there's no separation at all from the rikishi when they come out of the shiitake beya and the public at large. You know, I've had some close encounters as anybody would who goes to that tournament. I think if you're at all sensitive to the smell of binzuke, uh, you got to get your food and get out of there because you might not want to eat after that. You're so close to these guys. So I think how they manage the public is going to be really interesting because even in March, you know, if we have things like effective vaccines, they're not going to, they may not be widespread enough, at least in Japan, to have a policy in place for sumo spectators. You know, that, that's, that's probably not the first priority. So uh, I, I think with regard to Osaka, it's my favorite tournament. The Kansai fans are the best. Um, and so I'm glad for them they get to go after a year off. And I'm devastated myself that, that I'm not going to be able to enjoy it in person. <laughs> he tried. He tried this year. But I know. It, I know. It didn't happen. I drank a lot of cocktails. It was fine. Yes, well, at least you could console yourself with that. Andy, um, so returning to normal, do we think that maybe sometime in 2021 we could see the return of Jungyo? That's the key. I mean, it's great to see a measured approach of uh, going back to normal, but let's see when they have Senshu Raku parties. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think that they'll start. The Heia will start having events before Jungyo starts back up again, um, because the Heia will probably be able to do a little bit more screening and. Um, uh, screening of smaller groups before we would open up to a Jungyo or to more Hanazumo events, things like that. That's what I'm, I'm really curious about how retirement ceremonies are going to happen uh, over yeah. the next year because there's they, a log we, jam of them. Yeah. They're, they're stacking up one over uh, one after another. And that makes me wonder if, if that's the real reason why Koto Shogiku is still hanging around in Jurio, um, because I mean, it, it looks like now he'd have to wait until 2022 before he can get the Kokugi Um So I, I don't know. I mean, they're, they'll be able to probably do Senshu Raku parties this year. Uh, maybe COVID testing of, of some of the, um, I guess, pricier admission um, with social distancing of the of what you would see in a tournament. Um, but I think it really is key to see how the stables are going to be able to uh, keep raising money and keep fans engaged uh, during this time before Jungyo comes back. I mean, Jungyo will be probably the last thing um, that comes back. So um, to keep on the theme, we now have this uh, this uh, set of, of COVID control measures in place for the November tournament. The uh, the Rikishi, their stables, people associated with the stables are now on, on curfew. Um, given what happened in September, um, thoughts that we may see another uh, another set of people get uh, get slapped around for breaking quarantine. Andy, thoughts? Gosh, I hope not. Um... I mean, I, I think that they've seen what happened to uh, to Abi and oh, I'm blanking on the um, on the Shikana. Uh, well, it was Goku Shinto. Yeah. yeah, it was Goku it was. Shinto. Was not, not anymore. He got his Shikona taken away. Well, and that that's what I'm wondering if if Abi's gonna get his Shikona taken away um, as uh, punishment. Um, but it, I mean, they've they've seen what can. Um, I guess they've they've not seen what could happen because Abi could have been kicked out. Yes. Uh, uh, and and so they haven't seen the worst po uh, thing that could happen, but hopefully it kind of rung home with people. It hit home that hey, it's not worth 
like going out to a um, cabaret club. Uh, but I do <laughs> think that like with Shodai, you saw him going home after his U show. You saw him being able to go and sleep in his own bed. I do think that the uh, that the Kyokai itself may be a little bit more open to certain things, just not going out to uh, night businesses. Like, no, um, uh, that kind of thing might not happen, but uh, I, they're probably quietly allowing more things than, um, than the strict uh, everything stays in the hair. So, uh, so Josh, it, I, if I could sum up, I would say it seems the Sumo Association has learned to respect the uh, coronavirus, uh, and they've, mm. they've found a path through it. Um, some thoughts about, uh, about November. Do you think that we'll see, uh, we'll see better compliance with the rules this time? It's really difficult to say. I'd say a couple of things about that. The first one being that, you know, last time out, there was a marked difference between Rikishi not behaving themselves, and it was two Oyakata who got in right. trouble. It was Matsugane from, from Nishino Sekibea, <coughs> and, um, and I think also Tokitsukaze uh, Oyakata, the actual stable master of Shodai Stable, um, also got got punished for, uh, for breaking the rules. So, um, I, I mean, you would hope that, that the adults in the room would be the ones that were able to uh, comply with the rules at their own organization setting. Hopefully that'll be the case this time. I think that, that kind of brings us to the second thing, which is, you know, Tamanoi Bea, the entire stable, as you mentioned earlier, was, was Kujo from the last tournament. They were able to keep their ranks and uh, stable masters. So, you know, no, one, no one knows how it happened, but everyone's okay. And um, I think the real, the real interesting, the real lucky thing is you, you're talking about this in the context of, you know, Sumo looks like it's handled this really, really well. And if it had been another stable instead of Tamanoi, a stable that had somebody in the top division, yeah. I wonder if, if wh how we would look at that. Because the reality is the whole stable could go Kujo, and it didn't change the competitive balance of the tournament because that stable, they have, I mean, they have 28, 30 guys, but none of them are in the top division. So it wasn't like anybody who even could have challenged for the U show suddenly was missing because of coronavirus. You know, all these guys were like, you know, Jurio 7 and below. They have two guys in Jurio. So it, it didn't fundamentally change the tournament that we had. But, you know, had it been a stable like um, Oite Kazebea, where yeah. you have, you know, three or four guys in the top division, that changes from a competitive aspect the tournament that we would have, and it, it potentially takes out a couple people who might be in contention for Junyu show or Yu show. So yep. um, I think that, you know, we can probably look at this and cautiously say they're continuing to improve the way that they're dealing with it, but they still need to be vigilant to ensure that they don't have a repeat of sending another stable entirely Kujo for a tournament again. Okay, and with that, it's time for us to take the plunge into uh, <laughs> what everyone's been waiting for, our, our regrettable predictions. Um, for those of you who are new to the podcast, this is uh, something we go through before every tournament where we, uh, we attempt to predict events, including you show winners uh, for the tournament, and many times we regret them within the first 48 hours. Um, so... Uh, so we'll start with uh, we'll, we'll start with the man who tends to uh, to bring the best outrage in the sumo world, Andy. Let's have your regrettable predictions, please. Well, I, I made a joke on Twitter about Takake Show, but that's not. Um, it, I, I do not believe that Takake Show is going to walk away with this huge show, uh, but I do think that um, Takayasu will pick up his first wow. final. That oh. will be. And, and there will be parties everywhere because Takayasu will finally pick it up and they'll, they'll start wondering if he will actually claim his Ozeki spot back. Will, will uh, his mother finally be in a good mood? Uh, I, I think that that will get her a long way to, to um, being very, very happy. All right. Josh, your regrettable prediction, please. Yeah, I'd say that if he does that and Araiso decides to split off and start his own Heia as a result of that, that could be 
truly uh, controversial or, or, or an interesting story. Um, so Hakuho used to do this thing where he'd come back from injury layoff, tune himself up with one Basho, and then win the following tournament. So I think if he can keep healthy, he can win Hatsu, but this one comes a little too soon, so I'm going to rule him out. I wouldn't be surprised to see one of the Ozeki run it, run it close. I think it has to happen at some point. Um, so I actually would put Takakesho in the box seat in the conversation. Oh, I think he's one of the favorites. Um, I also, with Andy, I wouldn't be surprised to see one of the Komusubi do it. Uh, neither of them are going to be healthy for very long. So it's possible this is their last best chance to push as far as they can. So if I'm going to pick from three, I, I'd say I think it's going to be one of uh, one of the T's, one of the Takakesho, Takayasu, or Terano Fuji. That's very solid prediction, and and way to not settle on a single one. You've got a couple of outs. That's because I said cocker you like a few months ago, and then well, well played, Mr. Khan. I just, yeah, that was great. So what's not so, do that so again. it's down to me, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll make the following cocker you as a no start, and you'll hear a lot of noise coming from the YDC, and everyone will uh, will be very concerned, but they're not going to throw out a Yokozuna at this point, at least not while the the sport is still trying to get its feet under it. Um, I think uh, Josh is correct. We will see Hakuho enter. Um, and I think that there's probably a, a, at least a 50-50, if not greater chance of him uh, picking up a career-ending injury um, as a result, because I doubt from the surgery he's completely healed. His ego is enormous, and we may see him uh, write a check too big for him to cash, which would be a shame, but the same token, the guy is, the guy is set. Um, and for my pick for the U Show... Um, there was a fellow who had a lot of pressure on him going into September. He choked. He felt bad. He, uh, he really, really got inside his own head, I think, uh, and, and did a lot of work there. And that's Asanoyama. I think we will see an Asanoyama Yusho, his second. Uh, and I think the, uh, the, the mumblings about uh, a rope run uh, will be on for January. Uh, and with that... I'd like to say thank you to Josh. Thank you to Andy for, uh, for joining me for this November uh, podcast. Uh, folks, thank you. Enjoy the tournament. And remember, for Sumo, it's Tachi Eye.